So in these short videos, I will be going over the different chapters in the marine science book here for, I, for AS and A level. I only teach AS level uh, at RMF School College right now. So we will mainly be focusing on the chapters here for the AS level. So we are going to look at section 1.1 in the marine syllabus here, which is the basic physical properties of water. And we're going to look at the atom structure. We're going to look at uh, the, the kinetic um, model behavior. And we're going to look at how the water molecule is bound together and how these bounds define the chemistry and behavior of the water. So the first thing we talk about in the chapter is the kinetic particle theory. And the idea is that the atoms will move more or less depending on how much energy is supplied to the system. So water, for example, when there is less energy, which in this case here is heat, less energy, the water atoms will bind together, the hydrogen bonds, and will only vibrate slightly. They are bound together in a crystal structure, which is ice. As we add more energy, meaning heat, the molecules start vibrating more and more, and we will get into a liquid state, the molecules are still bound together by hydrogen bonds, but they're now able to move freely and become a liquid. And if we add even more energy, eventually, some of them will have enough energy to break those bounds and escape as a gas. So this is our kinetic uh, particle theory, which explains why when we add more and more energy, the water will eventually evaporate or turn into water. Now, this is not a physics class, but we still have to talk about the basic structure of the atom as we see it here. And this is a badly drawn example, but here we have a very simple hydrogen atom. It's an isotope, which also has a neutron, so it's deuterium. We have a proton here in the center who has a positive charge. We have a neutron who has a negative charge. These here are together in the nucleus, the center of the atom. Around it, I've drawn one electron orbiting. This is not how electrons behave, this is just how we draw them. In reality, they are more like a wave function functioning around and has a statistic value where we might find the electron at any given time and place. But just to understand how we see atoms in marine science, we have the nucleus where we have the weight, the amount of protons decide which um, where we are on the periodic table, what element we have, the neutrons decide what isotope we have, and how the electrons behave tell us how this compound, this atom, will behave chemically, because it is the sharing of electrons that uh, show how atoms will bind together. Now, this is not going to be a full-on chemistry class, but it would be an advantage if you know how to use a periodic table. So, either have one, you know, physically, or go to ptable.com and practice that because being able to read and identify elements on the periodic table will be a huge advantage for everything else we'll be doing here in marine science. So covalent bonds, um, they occur when two atoms, two elements, they share electrons to get a more stable formation. In this case here, oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell, but if it had eight, it would be in a way better formation. And hydrogen has one and needs two. So there will be a sharing of atoms here. In this case here, it's a single bond. But as we'll see later, there are other types of bond when you share more than one pair of electrons. Now, compounds with covalent bonds are able to exist as both a solid, liquid, and a gas at room temperature. And as we see in our kinetic theory, this is exactly how water behaves. And here we see the three different types of covalent bonds we have in water, where we share one electron. So oxygen shares one with the hydrogen. We have in CO2 here, where we have a double bond. So there's two electrons shared. And we have in our nitrogen, N2, where we share three electrons. So we have a triple bond. Each of these give a different chemical structure and also decides how hard it is to break this atom up. Sorry, this molecule. An ion is an atom that either gained or lost one or more electrons. 
if an atom loses electrons, it loses a negative charge, so it becomes more positive. If it gains electrons, it gets more negative charges and thereby becoming more negative. So when sodium loses an electron, it becomes sodium plus, and when chlorine gains an electron, it becomes Cl minus. So ionic bonds then forms when we have one ion with a positive charge and another ion with a negative charge. There is now electric attraction between them, so they'll tend to bind together with the positive and the negative side locking together. So we have plus and minus, minus and plus, plus and minus, minus and plus linking together. This is what we see in sodium fluoride. As a salt, we have the crystals where the positive and negative charges are bound together in a crystal-like structure. Last but not least important, we have hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds is a weaker bond that occurs between molecules containing a hydrogen atom bonded to an atom like oxygen or nitrogen or fluorine or other atoms. What happens here is that the negative charge of the electrons is not completely um, fairly divided. So the oxygen atom has a much stronger attraction to the bonding pair of electrons, resulting in this being pulled closer to the oxygen atom than the hydrogen atom. This unequal sharing causes a partial charge on the atoms involved in the bond. So the hydrogen atoms are slightly positive and our oxygen atoms will be slightly negative. Now this is super important because while hydrogen bonds are quite easily broken compared to other bonds, this means that all the water molecules will bind together. So there are many hydrogen bonds that are continuously formed between water, water molecules. One of the reasons why seawater is so unique is because water is a polar molecule. And we'll get into detail later why this is so important. Um, water being a polar molecule makes it a very good solvent. And we'll talk about that in section 1.2. And the partial charges on the water molecule allows it to form bonds with an unusual number of substances, making water one of the best solvents on the planet. Now, the density of water is also impaired by hydrogen bonds. Um, so, eventually, when we lower the energy in the system, the atoms vibrate less. So, as water nears its freezing point, the water molecules slow down and the hydrogen bonds become stronger. Thereby, water becomes denser. So colder water is more dense than warm water. This will also be very important in our coming chapters.